How did I make $50,000 a month on Etsy without ads? In today's video, I'm going to teach you how I made over $50,000 a month on Etsy while relying purely on organic growth. And this is the exact same way that I have built not just one, but now two seven-figure businesses. Before we get started, I do want you to comment below if you are an Etsy seller, if you use ads, yes or no, and if so, how much you spend per day? What is your daily budget? And I wanna know, do you actually have a positive return or are are you losing money? If you're new here, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris. I'm an Etsy seller of seven years. I've made over a million dollars in profit on the platform and my entire background is corporate e-commerce. I worked for some big companies like Zappos and Zulily and I also sell on Amazon and Shopify. And now myself and my entire coaching team are teaching over 2000 Etsy sellers how to scale their businesses to multi six figures. But in this video, I'm going to give you all the different ways to get in front of your customers on Etsy without paying for ads. And I'm actually going to use your shops and your different social media channels to show you exactly what I would fix so that you can actually get more organic traffic. Keep an eye out, I might be featuring your shop. <laughs> Number one, Instagram. Okay, we need to talk about Instagram. Instagram is the place to nurture your audience, which means you're giving, right? You're, you're nurturing, you're creating trust, right? They're getting to know you, you're getting to know them. Instagram is a place where you can build a cult-like following. It is also a place where you should focus on building up the lifetime value of your customer so you can serve them for at least four to seven years. Now with Instagram, I don't know if you guys know Gary Vee, but the jab, 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 right hook method, that is one way to think about it. Alex Hormozzi's version of this is give, give, give until they ask. It's about giving them value. And it doesn't mean value by promoting discounts, okay? And it doesn't mean value about pushing product on them. Value can be so many different things. One way to provide value is through entertainment, okay? Something funny. There's so many ways to nurture your audience, but this is the place for you to connect with them and make your customers and prospective customers feel understood. This is an example of what not to do. It is very product focused. You can see the engagement is super, super low. Some of these reels are getting less than 50 impressions, which is sad, right? I also see a huge problem with this Instagram account is what they're posting. This is not going to nurture any customers. It's just pushing product. The other thing is it's a lot of the same product, which is not ideal because this is where you wanna be bringing in new and trendy and different. And this is where you want your customers to see something new for the first time. So if you're dropping something, hint at it, right? There's all these different fonts. It looks very disjointed. One thing to keep in mind with fonts is keep things cohesive, right? Every post on this Instagram account looks like it could be from a completely different account. Have a variety of content types. So for us, you know, we post a wide variety of content types. There's probably 12 to 18 different types of content that we post and that we rotate through. This also looks like the last thing posted was about two weeks ago. So it's not showing any consistency. I don't see really behind the scenes. I don't see any new products. This account is not really nurturing the customers. You want to have photos of behind the scenes, photos of your shipments going out. You want to have photos of your supplies. You want to have photos of your workspace. You want to have photos of your family. You can turn all of these things into reels. You should have reels of your orders going out. You should be sharing sneak peeks of all your customer orders. You should be tagging celebrities in your posts. And don't forget stories. That is where the nurturing happens. I don't see any stories happening there. The next thing I want to talk about is an email list. Personally, we've made over six figures per month with an email list. The key here is it's all in the copy. People do not know how to work an email list and Etsy sellers especially focus on creating an email list when maybe that is not the time for it. An email list can become a big distraction if you are not dedicated enough to produce content for it. You do not want to do an email list halfway. You also need to give to your email list more than you take from them. So this means you're going to have to put a lot of effort into providing value, giving guidance, giving advice, offering solutions. And having an email list, it's like being in a relationship. You want to keep them wanting more. So nurture consistently and be reliable. Now by reliable, I mean consistent so that they know they're going to get emails from you once a week, twice a week, right? Not five days in a row and then one month off and then seven days in a row and then another month off. You need to be reliable and create a pattern. If you're going to prioritize an email list or a blog, I would prioritize an email list. When you have an email list though, remember you need to have a value-packed opt-in. It needs to be something that other people charge for and yours is free and better than theirs. A checklist is a great opt-in as an example, but I don't recommend just doing like 10% off coupon code. That's not always as compelling. And if you are a shop that 
runs frequent sales, then this coupon code won't even matter because it can't stack on top of the rest of your sales. So with your email list, do not just be pushing product. You actually have to be giving way more value than just pushing product and saying things are on sale. If that's your agenda with an email list, probably wouldn't do it. But if you're gonna do an email list or a blog, I would choose an email list. And this brings me to the next thing, which is a blog. Should your Etsy shop have a blog? Is that a way to get traffic? I think actually a blog can be the biggest distraction to driving sales. And keep in mind, I was a blogger for over 10 years. I was doing brand deals. I had like over 8 million hits. And I will tell you, if you don't have enough time to dedicate consistent effort to a blog, it's probably not worth starting because you don't wanna become like the 99% of blogs that have like one month of posts and then they just faded away, but they're still sitting out there. If that's gonna be you, if you don't have the time and energy to dedicate to it, I wouldn't even start one. Here's an example of a shop that has, you know, a couple blog posts from, looks like there were three different blog posts one day and then one a few weeks later. And you can tell like the intention was there, but just the bandwidth to follow through wasn't. So it can become a bit of a distraction. Instead of doing that, I would actually spend my time doing product development if that was my shop. If you're going to do a blog, leverage Pinterest for that. You're going to be leveraging the blog for Pinterest and Etsy, and they're all gonna work together really well. That's exactly what I did, but you've gotta make sure on both Etsy and the blog that you have Pinterest optimized photos. Otherwise, it's probably not worth doing Pinterest. So Pinterest optimized photos are absolutely key if you wanna leverage Pinterest for the blog and Etsy. Moving on to the next way to make organic sales without paying for ads is Facebook. Now, Facebook, it is one of my favorites, and people ask me all the time, they're like, Dylan, does that still work? I'm like, yes, you guys, it does. I hear every single week from our students that the Facebook strategy is one of the top things leading to accelerated growth. So a lot of people think I just need to create a business page for my Facebook and people on Facebook will find my page and I'll get sales. Well, question, Nancy, how do you expect people to find your page? So you open the page, you realize you have no followers, you start inviting all your friends and family. This is what inevitably happens. You end up with about 100 people who are like, the page, giving it a thumbs up, and this leaves you in this awkward position of, you know, promoting products to your friends and family. This is an example of a business using Facebook in a way that I wouldn't recommend using it. So I would not prioritize using Facebook for a business page. I would prioritize leveraging Facebook in other ways. Now, our Facebook strategy, it is a three-prong approach. Having a Facebook page, you're expecting people to come to you. Our Facebook methods in our program are much more outbound. So that means we are getting in front of customers who we call warm leads, you know, they're ready to buy. And we are providing solutions to people who have problems and they're actually looking for solutions. And Facebook interest groups are just one of those three approaches. The next way to get sales with organic traffic is through a B2B angle. This means selling to other businesses. I believe almost any Etsy shop could have a B2B section of their shop. Now, again, with B2B sales, you need to be doing hardcore outbound to get those sales. So this is like lead generation. Yes, you're doing lead generation for your Etsy shop. You might be thinking, oh, that sounds like so much work. I would ask, do you want to have a really successful business and do you want to achieve results that others will not achieve? If so, you're going to have to do things that others are not willing to do to achieve those results. Most people aren't willing to do outbound lead generation for their shops, but with B2B customers, this is one of the best ways to get customers who you could serve for at least four to seven years, driving up that LT. TV. So if you're a B2B Etsy shop or you want to start selling some B2B items, do not rely on inbound. Instead, go straight to the source, the most profitable growing sectors, give them something for free, blow them away, and ask for a review in exchange for that. And then see if they'd want more at some point in the future because they were so blown away by the quality and the experience. So if this was my Etsy shop, what I would literally be doing is following all the polymer clay Etsy shops, sending them messages, offering them free molds. You know, a couple hundred different Etsy shops, maybe doing about 20 a day. Now you're not doing this on Etsy because that's soliciting and that will get you shut down real quick. We're going straight to the source, not on Etsy, and offering them your free molds or free texture mats and in exchange for a great review and maybe even tagging you in their post. 
The thing is once businesses find vendors that they like, they stick with them. Why? Because it takes time to source new vendors. And if you can lock them in with great reliable service as a B2B partner, you might earn yourself a customer for life. And once you develop relationships with businesses, if they do need something new, they will typically ask their current vendors first before seeking out a new vendor, which is great because it gives you the opportunity to expand your product mix with things that people actually want. All right, the next thing we need to do to make a lot of money on Etsy with organic methods is to have a multi-dimensional product mix. And this relates to your SEO. So your SEO has got to be on point, but SEO is not enough if your product mix is one-dimensional. A one-dimensional product mix can kill your organic traffic. And this is because everything is cannibalizing each other. Let's say you have a shop right here and you sell to a lot of LDS customers. You have all these LDS t-shirts and sweatshirts. Well, how many different search results are you going to show up in front of? You're only going to be found for a very limited number of long tail keywords. Unless you are seeing consistent high revenue in your shop, I would focus on a product mix that is more wide instead of deep. And this is when it comes to the variety of your long tail keywords. And when you do these long tail keywords, the SEO has to be structured correctly. Otherwise, you're never gonna get found. So SEO is probably one of the easiest ways to get free organic traffic on Etsy. And it's because you're doing it already. Most of the places that you should have SEO, you likely are typing something in there already, just might not be the right thing or the right structure. Learning SEO is one of the highest ROI activities you could do for your shop. If you are curious about the correct way to do SEO that is the most effective for fast growth, definitely check out a couple of my videos on this. I have several videos on SEO that might be helpful to you. Now, the last way here to get organic traffic to drive up your sales without paying for ads is one that worked the best for me out of any social media strategy in terms of the volume of customers it brought over. And not only the volume of customers, but the total overall revenue. And it was Pinterest. Now I used Pinterest to drive over 90% of my social media traffic in a year's time frame. And what that did was it didn't only bring over a huge influx of customers, but it created what I call power listings. And these are listings that are designed to do at least $20,000 in their lifetime. And it brought over 90% of my social media traffic. And at one point, Pinterest was bringing over 100,000 visits, not just views, but visits to my shop in a year. The strategy was not sitting on Canva doing these cumbersome, intricate pins, but it was by optimizing my listings for Pinterest. And at the same time, going hard with the Google Chrome extension. And this is about consistency. So it's the long game. So it's months of this, but it is so worth it because it got me at least a dozen listings that did over $20,000 in their lifetime, some of them doing over $100,000. This Pinterest strategy is the same exact strategy that I used to drive up my blog traffic to over 8 million hits. Consistency matters here, so if you are an inconsistent person, you will not see these types of results. If you need help driving up your sales and getting more organic traffic without paying for ads, we'd love to hear from you. Or if you are sick of paying for ads that you're actually losing money on, we'd also love to hear from you. Our marketing strategy are not only very powerful, but they are very repeatable, not only on Etsy, but in my coaching business, in digital product businesses, in print on demand businesses, these strategies work. And if you'd like to hear more about them, just reach out to us. You can leave a comment below or just send us a message over on Instagram at Dylan Jarris. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the next video. Until now, I didn't really have many sales in my Etsy shop. Almost a month ago, I bought the course. I can see a steady growth increase in my views, especially in my conversion rate, which was very low before.